things are not always as they appear. How do you kill your own mother? People thought of us as the sweetest mother, daughter, the best people in the world. Alrighty, folks, so I've been asked to comment on uh, the Gypsy Rose Blanchard controversy. She's become a popular online influencer after her mom basically had Munchausen syndrome by proxy and treated her for years as a sufferer of leukemia, muscular dystrophy, etc. If you remember the Hulu miniseries, The Act, with Joey King and Patricia Arquette, that's what that series was all about. And then eventually, Gypsy Rose had a boyfriend and she had her boyfriend murder her mother. And she ended up doing eight years in prison. And meanwhile, her boyfriend got life in prison. So she was released from prison and her social media following is up to 8.3 million. And she has now been on Good Morning America. She was with the ladies on The View. Again, this is a perfect encapsulation of what our society is. Anybody who was at any point a victim becomes a hero. That's the way this works. Victimhood, heroism, the same thing. Now, This is a terribly horrifying story, a very, very sad story. Does it make you a hero? That you should be feted on Good Morning America? That you should be appearing on The View as a person worth talking to? If you were victimized by your parents with like the worst child abuse, and then you worked with your boyfriend to murder her? Seems to me not. So there are a bunch of issues to unpack here. First, there is the legal issue, which is was the murder justified after years of abuse from her mother. So what's unclear to me in this particular case is why she pled guilty. She pled guilty to a second degree murder charge. Now, it was clearly first degree murder in the sense that it was premeditated. So by all available evidence, she was working with her then boyfriend to murder her mother. Like she was texting with him. She apparently let him into the house where her mom was murdered, provided him with the goods to do the murder, including the knife. He said that afterward they had sex. She said afterward that he had raped her. <laughs> the person who did the killing, a guy named Nicholas Godjohn, he apparently reported an IQ of 82, suggested there was some impairment. He had a history of indecent exposure and a history of mental illness. Apparently, they met on a Christian singles website. He sometimes reported dissociative identity disorder and autism spectrum disorder. She let him in the house. He killed mom. This is after mom had spent years abusing her, pulling out her teeth, undernourishing her, treating her as a child, even though she was an adult and all the rest of this. And then she pled guilty to second degree murder. She, as we say, received some years in jail and he received life in prison. Was she guilty of first degree murder? Yes. Were there extenuating circumstances? Also, yes, which is probably why she pled guilty to the second degree murder. That was the plea deal that was offered to her. Maybe prosecutors felt that if they went for first degree, she'd get acquitted. She felt that if she actually went to trial, maybe she would get convicted. And so she didn't want to spend more time in jail. So they they settled the thing out and she did some years in jail. Now she's out. As far as her boyfriend, the question is why he received such a disparate sentence from her. She's the one who convinced him to do the murder. Now, number one, he wasn't the one who was actively victimized. Right? It was she who was victimized by her mom. So it's possible that the court viewed that differently. They looked at him and they saw somebody who may have been quasi-sociopathic, somebody who was violent, somebody who was in fact a murderer and who might not have restricted his murderous activities to just this girl's mom. The real question isn't why he received life in prison. The question is really why she received second degree. He should have received life in prison because again, even if you were gonna suggest that he was acting in defense of self or others, that's obviously untrue. He could have called the police for child abuse and so could she at any point along the line here. We'll get to more on that crazy story, but first, using the internet without ExpressVPN, lots like leaving your laptop open and unattended at the coffee shop table. Most of the time, probably fine. What if you turn around one day and your laptop is just gone? Every time you connect to an unencrypted network in a coffee shop or a hotel or an airport, hackers on that same network can access your personal data. It doesn't take a genius to hack somebody. All you need is some cheap hardware, which is why I use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so hackers can't steal your data. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. I love ExpressVPN. It's incredibly easy to use. All I need to do is fire up the app, click one button, and you turn it on. Plus, it works on all my devices so I can stay secure on the go. Secure your online data today. Visit expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Ben Shapiro Show. Get three extra months for free. I've been using them for years. They're the people who keep my online activity safe. You should do the same. Expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. Get three extra months for free. What's weird here, though, is uh, Gypsy's response to all of this. So Gypsy was asked if it was fair that her ex-boyfriend got life in prison while she gets to live free. And her response is sort of weird. Unless you actually believe that she, you know, quasi manipulated him 
into the murder, in which case the the actual response makes sense. Like if you actually thought that he was doing an altruistic thing in helping you get out from under the mom, then presumably you'd want to stand up for him. But she doesn't stand up for him. Instead, she's like, okay, she kind of knew this was a violent guy and she wanted her mom murdered, but she didn't have the ability to do it herself. So uh, here she was asked the question. Is it fair that he is incarcerated for life for killing your mom and you're out? Well, I'm sure that we both have a lot of regrets. All I can really say is that I did my time. He's doing his time for his part. Um, and I wish him well on his journey. I wish him well on his journey. His journey is going to involve being in prison the rest of his life. It's not the world's best journey. Her response is uh, strange to say the least. Uh, as far as the morality, you know, again, the morality is that she should have called the cops. She's a victim of child abuse. Having your boyfriend murder mom over this sort of thing is not the actual solution to the problem. So two wrongs do not make a right, as they frequently say. Her mom should have ended up in prison for child abuse, and she should have ended up being free, not her mom ended up dead. So Joy Behar, who of course has no moral gradations whatsoever, talked to Gypsy about whether this was moral or not. Please listen to me, heed my words, that you are not alone in, in, in this you know, situation. There are other ways out. Um, I, did, I did it the wrong way. Um, no, so, no, no, no. you know. Don't say that. I, but I did, no I, choice, did really. I did something wrong and I, I paid my dues for it. Oh, you it. mean that part? Yes, the part of it, oh, yeah. you know, that part of it. <laughs> Yeah. Where are you Never going mind. with this, yeah, Joy? Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, you know, her, so I did murder something. Murder is wrong, Yeah, Joy. murder is wrong. And the fact that she has to be corrected by, you know, the murderess, Joy Behar, all the, uh, all the moral compass of um, a penguin. So Gypsy also says that she forgave her mother and blames mental illness for the abuse. Again, all of that may be true. Also, um, like, that's why you call the cops, typically. Your mom has been portrayed as a monster. I don't believe my mother was a monster. She had a lot of demons herself that she was struggling with. I didn't want her dead. I just wanted out of my situation. And I thought that that was the only way out. Was her mom a monster? I mean, two things can be true at once. One, mental illness does make people into monsters. It can. Does that mean the person is fully in control over their actions when they're mentally ill? Not necessarily. Does it mean that they're, they're not monstrous? No, actually, you can be both. You can be both mentally ill and monstrous. The, the bigger question is really not her particular activity because it seems to me that the justice system may have largely gotten this right or at least somewhat close to right. The real question to me is why is, the, why, why is this person now considered some sort of, I understand it's a fascinating story, but I don't understand why this person has 8.3 million Instagram followers where you actually want to hear her thoughts on her subsequent life because here's what happened after this is the really kind of strange part of her story she's in prison and she starts getting letters from random dudes she says that she received over 500 letters from men across the country pursuing her while she was in prison that's effed up that's really effed up dudes do not look in the prisons for the ladies apparently one of these men she fell for and married him while she was still behind bars when i wrote the letter to gypsy i really just thought she would get it and read it and be like, oh, that's sweet. Thank you for reaching out and be like, okay, and just stick it in her stack of other letters. Just went from there, like, and just was like, I can't believe you wrote back to me. Like, why did you choose me? And like, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Like, what made her choose me to write me back? My understanding is that the guy who wrote her had a bet with his friend that his friend would write a letter to Joe Exotic and he would write a letter to her. Joe Exotic the great matchmaker, who would have thought? In any case, she has now been sharing stories about having sex with her husband on social media, which is not ideal. Not a big fan of that in any circumstance, literally any circumstance. What she said is that the D is fire. Mm, things we did not need to know. And yes, it does show that, as always, there is a lid for every pot, as they say. Whether that pot is a person who murdered mom and is in prison, or that's just a weird dude who's writing you in prison. Why is our culture obsessed with this woman? Because we will treat any victim as a hero. Any victim as a hero. Did she act heroically? No. At no point in this story did she act heroically. Is she a moral exemplar? No. Is it a fascinating story? Sure. Is this somebody we should be listening to any level of moral advice? I have doubts. Real doubts.